Hi, I'm Bob Mandel, founder of the Stroke Foundation. I'm here with Aileen, Dr. Aileen Stoller, and she is uh, head of the Stroke Center at the Physicians Regional. We're talking about risk factors for stroke. And um, they're very varied, aren't they? They're Absolutely. Very varied. The, the risk factors and the, and the way a stroke presents are very variable. So very often it becomes difficult for people to recognize the fact that they're having a stroke because right. they don't realize right. that that's a symptom. And that's a risk for serious serious strokes in itself because then they don't get to the hospital on time. Exactly, exactly. Right. You know, with, with heart attack, it's easy. The heart is a big muscle. And if you cut off blood flow to a big muscle, you collect a whole lot of toxic, toxic metabolites and the muscle starts to ache. So with heart attack, it's simple. You get chest pain. Right. There's no question right. about it. Because all the heart does is just pump. Right. It's a big muscle. And then because it starts to wear down and it doesn't pump as well, you get lightheaded and dizzy. But the symptoms are the same but regardless of where. With the heart attack. Right. That happens. But the brain is totally different. The brain is not a muscle. The brain, first of all, has absolutely no pain nerve endings. So the brain is not capable of feeling pain. Yeah, that's a very important point. Right. Very rarely, very rarely is headache or head pain a symptom of a stroke, it's a symptom of a certain kind, but it's really not the nerve endings in the brain, it's the nerve endings on the surface of the brain and the coverings of the brain. So we include headache as being a symptom, but we don't expect to see it very often, and we know it's a symptom of a very specific particular type if it happens. Well, it's actually, it's a, with a, uh, it's, with a hemorrhagic stroke, it's a big risk factor, headache. I had a terrible headache before I had my stroke. Right, I that's, had a hemorrhagic, <clears throat> right. but um, I had the worst headache I ever had in my life. Yeah, and that's a classic presentation because what happens is it's, we know that it only occurs when blood leaks out of a blood vessel onto the surface of the brain and irritates the, the nerve endings on the surface of the brain. So it tells you a couple things. It tells you that it's automatically that you know that there's blood involved and it's either from high blood pressure or, as Bob said, a hemorrhagic stroke or it's due to rupture of a blood vessel, say from an aneurysm. Sure. And those two things make up the vast minority of strokes. 85% of strokes are caused by a clot. Right. Right. Only 15% are caused by bleeding. So it makes up a lot less. Not to say that headache's not important, and the most important thing is people who say, this is the worst headache of my life. Right. Nothing makes it better. I can't stand the, the light shining in my eyes. Uh, the no noise is amplified. All of these things are tip-offs to the fact that this may be bleeding or hemorrhagic stroke. But the problem is that we don't have any other symptoms because it all depends where in the brain the stroke right. occurs. So if it occurs in your frontal lobes back here where, where movement is involved, you're going to have weakness or inability to move on the opposite side of the body from where that stroke occurred. If it occurs just a little bit farther back from that, you're gonna have numbness or inability to feel uh, or lack of sensation in the opposite side of the body. If it occurs in an area of the motor strip right over here, you're gonna have weakness or asymmetry of the face. So there, these are things that can be indicative of a stroke. You can also have a problem with stroke or have a symptom of stroke be lack of speech. The inability to say words, to get the words out that you want or sometimes the inability to understand words that are said to you right, right. are very common. Very I remember common. one lady who said <clears throat> she absolutely knew there was something wrong because she was standing there and she was at a garden party and people were talking to her and she said it sounded like they were going <laughs> or like they were speaking a language that she had never heard before. Right. So she couldn't understand what was being said. Also, many times people say, I know in my head what I want to say, but when I listen to what comes out of my mouth, it's nowhere like that. So one of the things you could do if you suspect that somebody's having difficulty with speech, ask them to recite a very simple sentence back, like my dog has fleas or anything, or ask them to do something simple and see if they can understand the words that are being said. So you're gonna be looking for asymmetry of the face where one side of their face is drooping and doesn't move as quickly as the other. You can ask them to hold their arms out and if one arm starts to drift down or if they can't do that, that tells you that they have difficulty with the motor part in the arms. You can ask them to walk or pick up their legs and if they're unable to pick up one or it moves much slower or they can't get it up as high, 
then you know that they're having difficulty with their lower extremities. They may also have difficulty with being under, making you able to understand them. And that's a little bit different than not being able to find the words. Sometimes if somebody has a facial droop, the muscles on that side of the face are not working. So when they talk to you, they'll sound like this, like they had novocaine on one side. Right. The, all, the words, all the words are okay, but they're slurring their speech. Right. That's different than not being able to find the words. Right. And that tells us it's important to know because one tells us that the stroke is here, whereas the other tells us that it's in some completely different right. area of the brain. But any of these things, you call 911 immediately. Exactly. Don't any, mess it around. Right. Call 911. Any of these things are, are symptoms. Also, another thing that's a symptom of a stroke is where the vision in one eye gets blurry. So that if you, you're looking at something, you close the bad eye and everything's clear, you close the other eye and it's all blurry. So blurred vision in one eye is also a symptom of a stroke. These are all things that need to be seen immediately because we do have a treatment for ischemic strokes or strokes that are caused by a clot, but we have a very distinct time frame. It will not work after a certain number of hours. And in fact, it's much more dangerous to do that. So it's imperative that people recognize that they may be having a stroke and get to the emergency room. Don't, please don't drive yourself. That's why we have the 911 system. So it's really important that people get to the hospital in that period of time so that we're able to treat you and hopefully reverse all of those symptoms. So, you know, one of the reasons you don't want to drive yourself, and my wife and I have done, we've driven ourselves and we found that it was the wrong thing. Because when you drive yourself, you're not seen right away unless it's an empty Good ER. point. I, had, I was ER. thinking, yeah. But the fact mm -hmm. is, we came in and we were, they still have me sitting outside Meanwhile, other people coming in with ambulances are going right into the emergency room. That's an excellent point. I never, I'm always thinking in terms of if it gets worse, you're going to be dangerous, you could lose your vision, you could run into things, it could hurt somebody else. But that's an even better point. When you go to the emergency room in an ambulance, you are taken right in the back. When you're what we call a walk-in, you are often go to the triage desk and they get all your insurance information. And you can be sitting a while. So that's an excellent right. point. Right. Thank you. So, I we finished this part. Right? Yep. And so, thank you, uh, Aileen. Um, so we have focused on this uh, this material because of the the risk factors uh, of stroke. Uh, secondary people have strokes um, a second time more often, and we don't want that to happen to you. So, thank you very much, and uh, we'll be back.